Toronto, it can be really unforgiving. It's a really fast paced, you know, no time for explanations, just get moving, get moving. I'm from a small uh, city. Everyone knows the mayor. The mayor knows everyone. Uh, whereas here, I feel uh, I didn't really know a lot about how things are done. My mom, she's disabled. Even though Toronto is great for people with disability, it's still really hard. Uh, sometimes you have to cross the road, use the sidewalk that side, cross the road again, then come back to where you started. <laughs> I like downtown, I gotta say. I've often thought, I wonder if I would, could live down there. But you live in downtown Toronto, you haven't, got a, you haven't got a clue about the burbs. You have no reason to come out here. I get that. Yeah. Why would you? I don't know why I came to Scarborough. No, you had it to do was for, some, for a man. <laughs> but it was a good thing because it brought me back to the city. I don't go to Brampton, I don't go to Etobicoke, I don't know what everybody else, I can only speak for this area of Scarborough. So, you know, I bring some important experiences to my work here as a woman, as a mother who's pushed a stroller through this city, but I'm not disabled and I don't know what that experience is like. I need that voice at the table. I'm not 18 years old, I need that voice at the table. I'm also not a 75 year old senior. I need that voice at the table as well to ensure that I'm making a great recommendation to City Council. So the problem we're really trying to solve in creating this panel is ensuring that we have a truly representative group in helping us create policy for the future city. What's really exciting about the panel is the way that it's been established and its makeup of the panel. So what we did was we uh, used a process called the Civic Lottery where we sent out 12,000 invitations to random households across the city. We had over 500 responses and all we did was ask people to tell us their age, their gender, uh, their, whether or not they identified as a visible minority or an Aboriginal and whether they were renters or owners. And that way we were able to select panelists who really re uh, represented the diversity of the City of Toronto in terms of age, gender, visible minority status and housing tenure. In order to create a, a culture that has meaningful civic engagement, it's really important to provide a window to the planning process. You know, we just don't want random, uninformed opinions. We need people at the table who are thinking deeply about the complexity of the city and the complexity of the issues that we face. Our objective is to draw people into the planning process to build understanding such that we can then really draw on the richness of the thinking that comes from the lived experience of the city. I think most people in their everyday job, they don't get a lot of um, opportunities to be creative and to give feedback and give input and get their opinions heard. Yeah, you kind of feel VIP. I feel like we're given a lot of information uh, for us to have an understanding of how it works so that our voice is not just biased or based on what we think. Our voices think more than just complaining, but exploring like what else could work. We're looking at building the the city and accommodating a lot of people's different needs and wants and hoping to form communities where people will want to get together from all walks of life. Yeah. There's a lot, lot to the city, a lot more than, than I ever thought. What's the chances of getting picked? What are the chances? I was really surprised and honored because after the first meeting I realized that, yeah, I need to be here. Yeah, and I'm glad you invited me.